electrical con uh, conductance along it. Okay, uh, and of course we have the sino atrial node, which is up the top there on in the atrium, uh, and then we have the AV node. And that's a conduction, so I'll start play again. So you have your SA node and you have the um, conduction from that to the A, uh, sorry, the SAN node to the AV node. Now you watch this, you can actually see that when we get to the AV node that it actually s slows down a bit. Okay, nice and slow. And the reason for that is so that the blood, the actual atrium can contract and empty blood into the ventricle. So if it went through very quickly, you wouldn't get this lovely coordinated contractions, okay? Uh, and then it goes through the septum and it does that quite quickly so we can get a really strong contraction from the ventricles. Beautiful. So that off it goes up the pajinky fibers to the ventricle and then we get this lovely co coordinated contractions. And I will go to, we'll actually look at, alright so now this is really about um, the resisting membrane potential and we have the some sodium, potassium and some calcium and we have a cell that's been identified within these myocytes um, and you can see the myocytes are joined together really carefully with discs so they they work all in they're all joined together and they work in a coordinated action so the concentrations of charged ions across the cardiac myocyte cell are actually unbalanced uh, and that's why we have the action potential. Now the inner surface of the myocyte membrane which is around here is actually positive, uh, sorry, negatively charged relative to the extracellular fluid. Okay, So when we do this you can see that we have a negative charge on the membrane potential Okay, so that's minus 100-ish, just under minus 100. So we've got a little millivolt measure into the cell. We've got a little minus there. Okay, uh, and what that means is that um, the, um, there is a negative charge relative um, to the extracellular fluid. All right, so inside... Just, just on the the um, cell membrane. That's where it's where it tends to be negatively charged. Okay. So inside the cytoplasm, which is the orange-looking area, there's a much higher concentration of potassium ions than extracellular fluid. And in the extracellular fluid, which is the white part, uh, the main cations are sodium and calcium. Uh, and of course, that's why when we measure um, serum bloods that we have extracellular ions such as sodium being higher than potassium ions which are inside the cell. Okay so it, um, this all needs energy to, to work so it consumes um, ATP for energy uh, and then um, it so um, you need you need to be able to um, the heart actually works it requires insulin and glucose to have that energy which is important to note all right now resting membrane potential which we have there and um, this sort of ready orange line is is the um, membrane um, you've got the three cations potassium okay that's there uh, we've got sodium and we've got um, calcium. All right, so now um, what happens is that these have gated channels or little um, uh, 
little gates which allow the irons to move across. So we'll just play that and so you can see that they move back and forth over over time. Okay. All right. Which is good. And we have our action potential drawn there. We go up and then we get depolarization and repolarization. All right. Now down the bottom here, um, we've got um, a relative membrane permeability uh, chart and we've got the green is sodium, the orange is, is potassium and the uh, purple is calcium. So if we, if we start again, what actually happens is um, that we have uh, the membrane, this is the, you know, we saw the um, electrical current coming down to uh, a cell. Um, this is what, where it hits the particular cell. Uh, okay, and then we, we find that we get a sudden rush of sodium into the cell. Okay, and what that does is it changes the gradient across the cell membrane and increases the negative charge on the inner surface of the cell mem membrane. So that um, that makes it more negative on the actual membrane. Okay, and that's what we see as um, uh, and as it goes up, then suddenly it becomes positive. All right, so that's that's great. Uh, we have some calcium as well. Uh, and then we have some potassium and potassium actually goes for a longer period of time than the calcium and the sodium. All right, so that, all right, so after we've seen that, what's of interest, and I will just get my little pen out, which I like to use, um, what we have is this, um, you can see the action potential there goes up and then comes down. Okay, so that in a sense is the electrical um, action of the cell. Now the sodium, remember the sodium actually was only for a short period of time here. We've got a time scale along here. All right, time scale. But, and calcium occurs from here to about here. That's your calcium. But potassium there's actually uh, inward action of potassium on a slow scale. It starts here, gets a bit less here, and then continues there. So in fact, we, we have a lot more potassium happening. Then we have sodium, this is sodium, calcium, Oh, I can't do an A. I'm oh, sorry. Calcium there, and this is potassium. Okay. So in fact, what we have there is the potassium channeling is actually for a longer period of time. Uh, hence, the question is, why is the cardiac rhythm greatly influenced by serum potassium levels and least affected by serum sodium levels? Okay. So that is why. Uh, in fact, um, because it does affect the actual um, uh, action potential so much, you will probably find that in clinical practice we check the potassium quite regularly, don't we? Um, and in fact, what you find is that if we um, have a low potassium, we find that the action potential becomes shorter so low potassium will make this a shorter time frame, okay, and that can lead to excitability uh, and to ventricular arrhythmias leading up to really low potassiums. You can get torsades or um, like a VT. Uh, but if you have a high potassium, and I'll just take it the other way, if your potassium goes higher, then you tend to extend the action potential. Uh, in in high, hyperkalemia, you may end up getting bradycardias and things like that. All right. 
Now, amiodarone is given um, to affect the um, potassium channeling and to slow it down. Uh, and quite often we give that to patients who are in AF. Okay.